Hello everybody and welcome to Flock Talk. Today we are going to be going over what you can do to prepare your bird for their first trip outside after you've taught them how to wear their harness. Once you have taught them how to properly wear their harness, there is a little bit of work left to do to make sure that they are confident maneuvering their bodies in the harness and that they are confident with the concept of being out in this big open space. So there is a little bit of work left to do. You can't just rush them straight outdoors. So we're gonna hop into all the things you need to cover before coming out here today. And one quick thing I do wanna note is that some of these clips were taken a few months ago. Um, so some of them do have Mia in the background of them. I wasn't going to re-record them. One, I liked seeing her again, so they're going to stay there. And for two, um, they were an accurate representation of teaching Newt in the moment. I'm not going to try and fake teaching him something that he had already learned at that point. Um, it's not how I do things. So they are the genuine clips of Newt first learning how to handle each of those steps. Um, but Mia is present in them, so if you do not wish to see her, um, just be pre-warned that she is in the majority of the clips in this video. The first thing you would actually work on is just duration wearing the harness. I am assuming that you have already worked on that through the process of teaching them to wear the harness before working on any other element of how to move with the harness on and all the steps we're going to go over in this video. Your bird does need to understand how to wear the harness for a decent length of time. Um, so that should already be pretty well established. It's usually not too complicated to do. It's just feeding them treats with the harness on and extending how long they have it on each session just by little increments at a time before taking it off. So once your bird's able to have the harness on on their training perch and be pretty confident with it on and not being getting agitated or irritated with the straps touching them, that would be where this video is going to start. Absolute first thing is just making sure that our bird knows how to move with the harness on. A lot of birds may freeze when they feel scared, so even though you successfully put it on them and they might even sit still for a duration of time, as soon as they go to take a step, they can feel that their body weight has shifted and they've got this thing on them now, and that can cause them to feel quite distressed and quite scared or uncomfortable with it. So I'm just going to use a lure. I'm going to be holding that chest strap up so it's not gonna to touch his feet at all and just give him some very easy, simple steps. Make sure he is comfortable moving, that he's able to balance himself. This is gonna give him better understanding of how his body moves with the harness on and just start the absolute bare bones basics of how to maneuver his body and understand that he can move with this harness on him. Birds are perfectly balanced creatures, so by having a harness on them, it does throw off that balance a little bit and it's gonna take some time to adjust. We also have this long flowing strap that comes right out in front of their chest and that can be really, really strange for birds to get used to. So before I even think about going outside, I need to make sure that my bird is confident and comfortable with that little strap hanging down in front of their legs. I wanna know that they are able to problem solve and be able to maneuver around this so that when we do end up outside, we're not having stress and fear mixing in with this strange strap that they haven't figured out how to move around. That is a disaster waiting to happen. That's asking for a bird to be very, very panicked and stressed out when they're already gonna be a little bit stressed when they make it outside. So all I'm doing is having Newt on the back of a chair here and I am asking him to kind of turn around, take a few steps, and slowly learn how to maneuver around the strap. Now during this stage your bird might peck at the strap. If they are grabbing it and pulling at it and trying to get it off, that is a different thing. That is a bird that is not comfortable with the harness at all and needs to back up to those beginning steps first. If they're just tugging at it and getting a little bit frustrated with it where they might just do a quick peck, you can easily offer them a treat for them to disengage from the object. That is a different story. That's usually a bird just trying to kind of move the strap out of the way, uh, not fully understanding why it's getting in their way. That is okay, but if your bird is truly upset and distressed by this strap and they are grabbing it and trying to chew it, you need to back things up a little bit. So each time I go around this, I'm just gonna be asking Newt to turn around. He's gonna start learning how to maneuver his feet with this strap and he's gonna start building comfort. Now for the first few bits, I have my hand on the strap and I'm helping kind of lift it and turn it around with him so it's always staying in front of his body and in front of the perch. As this goes on, I'm going to leave the strap where it is and have it move in whatever way Newt naturally moves. So it ends up staying behind the chair and Newt will turn around and it'll end up between his legs going down behind the, the chair there. And that's gonna be a necessary skill if they end up outside and on branches and tree branches. Um, you're not always going to be able to grab the strap and wrap it around something because tree branches are going to be way, way too long. So it's important to make sure that they are comfortable not only with a strap hanging down in front of the perch that they're working on, but also dangling down behind as well in between their legs and ensuring that they are able to untangle themselves, be able to loop around and 
not get distressed or panicked because of the location of that strap. So I start out holding the strap to make it nice and easy for Newton, move it along with his body, then I'll leave it behind, then I'll ask him to shuffle and take steps with it between his legs, I'll ask him to spin around and problem solve, I'll use my treat to lure him around in the circle, so that way he can learn how to place his feet, what happens when he puts his feet on the strap, how to remove his foot from the strap. During this process, he's learning exactly how to untangle himself. He is learning that if he steps on the strap, it's gonna pull at his chest and he's gonna learn how to remove his foot from that strap to resolve that problem. And he's just developing all of those critical thinking skills that are gonna help him be able to problem solve and be confident when he does accidentally step on that strap when we are outside on a tree branch. So if he does panic or he does get scared here, he's safe inside in a non-stressful environment and he's not encountering that for the first time outdoors. So I'm basically just gonna keep him moving around, developing some confidence with his movement and ensuring that he's encountering all possible scenarios of how this strap could end up uh, on his body, touching different parts of his body, going between his legs and all of that good stuff. I am deliberately asking him to kind of lean and stretch as well. This is just to ensure that he's understanding how to balance and that he's developing proper muscles and learning how to grip and posture himself with the weight of the harness being more on his upper body now, because that's gonna adjust how he's able to stand. So making sure that he leans to grab those treats can be an excellent step. Newt was pretty eager to take some steps already. We were already taking steps at the end of the first part of the harness training tutorial. Um, so this is quite a bit of time having passed, and if your bird isn't comfortable taking steps right out the gate, I would just go for the leans first, let them just stretch and grab the treats, and then you'll slowly be able to get a little bit of a foot movement and a little bit of a shuffle if you have a bird that's a little bit more hesitant and doesn't just go straight for taking a lot of steps right out the gate. Next up is a pretty quick one, and this is just balance. So now we know that Newt on a very stable surface is able to control his body and walk around confidently. I want to ensure that he is able to properly balance himself if he's on a moving surface. So when you make it outside and you're walking around with them, if they're having any wind or just your body movement in that momentum will cause them to need to counterbalance. Um, again, that harness will affect that. So we want to make sure that our bird is confident and comfortable in that capacity as well. So I'm just going to walk very slowly and calmly with Newt on my finger. I've got just a little cup of seeds in front of him, which is doing a couple of things. One, it's reinforcing him all by himself while I try and hold a camera with the other hand. And two, he's bending forwards to get snacks out of that, which is adding more balance, helping him get more control over his body movements. Um, while I am walking around. Here we can also observe his comfort level. So your bird might be comfortable wearing the harness in their training area where they have a lot of confidence already, but they might feel uncomfortable wearing the harness as you approach different areas of your house um, that they may be less familiar with. And it's not necessarily because they're scared of your room, it's just because the harness they know they aren't super confident with. And if you're walking around your house and you're noticing your bird feel a little bit skinnier or they're being just a little bit more scared, um, that's a pretty telltale sign that they're not 100% confident with the harness on their body. So I would ensure to continue to walk around and work on sessions of this until your bird is able to be moved into new areas of the house without presenting a whole lot of fear, um, with showing full confidence in each new area as they would without the harness on. As some additional counterbalance practice, I'm going to have Newt on my hand and just gently tip it in different directions very slowly. Um, again, this is just encouraging him to counterbalance and to gain confidence in how he has control over his body and how the weight feels with the harness on him. I'm not deliberately trying to throw him off balance, I'm just making sure that he is capable of shifting his body weight and counterbalancing so when we do make it outside he has confidence in himself and his own body awareness and he will be able to counterbalance against the unexpected wind um, that he has not met before. A good way to tell whether or not your bird is actually comfortable with the harness is whether or not they are exhibiting natural behaviors. If your bird is just sitting pretty still or they're only responding for treats, um, then they may just be pushing past their discomfort for the sake of getting those rewards and they may not be actually fully comfortable with the situation. So I want to see them exhibiting behaviors that tell me that they are truly comfortable in the set of circumstances that they have here with the harness on. So I have a plate of vegetables here, which is not particularly high value, it's just standard food. And I wanna see that Newt is comfortable exhibiting his normal eating behaviors, eating his vegetables for breakfast, and not showing any signs of fear or discomfort or hesitancy to do so. A few other things you might try and get your bird to do is maybe play with some toys or forage, uh, maybe get some scritches, 
You're just trying to see if your bird is comfortable, not just tolerating it, but comfortable wearing the harness in your house in a scenario that they are already supposed to be confident in. Because if your bird is wearing a harness and you put your vegetables in front of them, which is something they would normally eat in your home, and all of a sudden they're not wanting to eat it, that's a pretty telltale sign that they're still not comfortable with the harness on and that they are not ready to go outside. Even if they may seem completely still or they may seem like they never pick at the harness, if they are not able to exhibit natural behaviors, they are still stressed out and they are still uncomfortable and we need to resolve that problem before we add more stress before going outside. With all of those sorted out, the last main behavior that I will ensure that Newt is able to do in his harness prior to thinking about going outside is recall. Now, when they first have their harness on and you are trying to get this to happen, I would just start with step up. Um, a, you wanna make sure they're comfortable moving around in that harness like we were doing in the first step. Stepping forwards can be something that's a little uncomfortable, especially if they were to trip on that cable. Um, but also just because the weight feels weird, right? And as I've said, birds are super, super balanced creatures. They are designed to perfection and having a little bit of weight on their chest when they haven't had that there their whole lives can take some time to get used to. And if you go outside and your bird happens to take off, say you don't have a full grip on your, on your leash or something goes wrong, um, you want to make sure that they're able to recall with that harness on and that they're not going to freeze up or feel like they are incapable of flying. If your bird happens to land on a high up branch, even if you still have your hand on the harness and you can't get up to them, you wanna make sure that they are capable of recalling down and that the bird feels confident doing so. So with the harness on, I'm gonna ask for some very basic recalls. This is a behavior that they should know before wearing the harness at all. Don't try and teach them a recall with the harness on for the first time. Make sure they know recall without the harness before trying to ask for a recall with the harness. And then when you're asking for recall with the harness, you basically want to start from scratch. So even though your bird might be able to recall from halfway across the room, for their first few recalls, basically just ask for a hop where they don't even have to put their wings out. Make it a nice, easy, successful distance. Um, that way the bird is able to process how it feels when they take off, how that strap feels when they're flying, and they can start to build a bit more confidence with it. A lot of the time your bird will not fly the first time you ask them to just because it's not comfortable, it feels weird, they aren't confident in themselves in that moment. So you do need to basically treat this like you are reteaching a recall, where you're just going to ask for a step up, then a little bit of a hop, and gradually add more and more distance until your bird is confident doing so. What I'm looking for in this recall is a lack of hesitancy. I want them to be responding almost immediately when my hand goes up. I don't want them humming and hawing, being unsure of whether or not they're capable of flying. And I'm looking for precise, strong flight. So even if he is flying the second that I ask for it, I want to make sure he's not wobbly and weird, that he's not kind of dodging or flying in a weird angle. It should be pretty straight, should be pretty strong. And the reason for that is because the harness is heavy, right? So A, just because the bird is flying and doing something doesn't mean they're comfortable actually doing it. It can mean that they're being kind of persuaded into doing so by the treats or whatever reward that you are using. And what that can cause is some very uncomfortable looking flight because the bird hasn't developed the muscles for it yet or they haven't quite figured out how to finagle their flight around that strap quite yet. And that can result in a bird that is flying because they're being asked to, but doesn't actually have the skills or the strength required to fly confidently and properly. And that can result in injuries, that can result in them um, not being able to handle flying outside when you get there. So what I'm looking for is flight that is pretty straight, flight that is strong, flight that doesn't have any hesitation when I ask for it, and a landing that is pretty decent. And I say pretty decent because your bird will basically almost always land and their foot will probably land on top of that strap. It's okay if they land and then shuffle and they need that little bit of time to readjust uh, after landing, as opposed to when there's no strap there, they'll just land and stay where they are and stretch for the treat. That's totally fine if they land and need to make that little adjustment after stepping on the strap. What I don't wanna see is a bird landing and then immediately falling or flumping forwards or losing balance. I don't wanna see a bird land and immediately get mad at the harness. They can land, they can adjust themselves so they're no longer standing on that strap but they should be tall, they should be confident, they should be stable. Those are pretty much all the behaviors and kind of the checklist of things that I wanna make sure is set in stone before we head outside. So now that we've got all of those things ready, our bird is comfortable and calm and confident, 
with the harness on and all they're exhibiting their natural behaviors indoors, now we will start the process of actually working our way outside. And the first thing we're gonna do is just sit by a window. Now, as you can see, it is the pit of winter here, so I'm not gonna open my door and let Newt listen to the sounds. Um, but ideally, if you have like a screen door or something, I would crack that open just a little bit, just to allow kind of the sounds and a little bit of the wind breeze to come in. And that way, when you're sitting out front, your bird is processing the environment that they're gonna be going into. I recommend having a tall fenced backyard, so that way it still feels kind of like an enclosed space, but just the ceiling is gone. So it kind of helps them feel a little bit safer as opposed to going outside into, and you have just like this big open space next to a road where there's a lot of traffic and noises and things whizzing by. If you have an enclosed fence backyard, it does make things a little bit nicer on them because it blocks out a lot of the environment because you have the, the fences that are kind of blocking out anything they can see. You just have to worry about the stuff above you and then you have your secluded backyard that is predictable and that stuff isn't really moving around in. And that makes it a lot easier for them to adjust to the environment. So I'm just sitting outside this window. It is negative 40 outside. I am not opening up my window, but I am sitting here and I am letting you watch the environment. There are still critters outside. We get wild bunnies, we get crows going by. So I'm just gonna sit with him and offer him treats for observing the environment. Now, obviously Newt has seen many a window. He knows what stuff is outside. Um, and that's why I've chosen this big giant back door because it's much more open and it kind of feels a lot more like a large open doorway as opposed to a small cramped window. But if you don't have one, a window will work just fine. It doesn't have to be a huge door like this. Um, but as he's observing, I'm gonna watch his body language and see what kinds of things trigger him or startle him. And I'm gonna make sure to be feeding him treats all throughout this process for being calm and watching things. Anytime something moves, I'm gonna quickly offer him a treat because if you just let them observe it and form their own thoughts about it, they're probably gonna decide they're scared about it, right? Whereas if you let them observe something and you follow it up with a treat, now they're much more likely to have a positive association with that thing that they've just seen for the first time. And that will set you up for a lot more success where they're gonna be a lot more confident once they head out there because now instead of seeing something moving outside and immediately being scared, they might see something move outside and begin to think that they're gonna get a treat or that more positive things are gonna happen because of that thing that's out there. Once they're at a point where they are consistently able to respond and be pretty relaxed at the window, that's when you can start to work your way outside. So first thing I'm gonna do, you can see many months have passed, it is now sunny outside. The first thing I'm gonna do is open up the door just a little bit, let Newt listen to the sounds that are out there, feel the wind, the temperature, um, take in all of those individual elements while he's still safe inside the home. And once he is seeming pretty confident with that, I'll open the door a little bit more, a little bit more, and a little bit more until we're really feeling like he's able to watch everything that's going on outside, listen to the sounds and things that are going on, and feel decently comfortable with it. Now, when it comes to going outside, I do have things set up in a very specific way. So you will see that I am holding my arm flat like a perch, and it is angled so Newt is able to walk outside or walk back inside, going up and down the length of my arm. That is me giving Newt easy choice and a very easy way to communicate to me whether or not he wants to move forwards. If he runs backwards towards my elbow, that's telling me he wants to go inside, easy peasy. I will listen to what he wants. This allows him to have control over what happens without having to fly or take off and potentially get hurt. This also makes it very easy for me to move at his pace and his comfort level. And that way I'm ensuring that through every step of this process, Newt has control over what's happening and he can very easily tell me that he's not okay with this and would like to go back. We're gonna basically just stay in the doorway and every time he moves towards my elbow, I will step back inside with him and wait. I'll give him treats for the effort, for trying, I'll comfort him, wait for him to relax. And then when he moves back towards my hand again, that's when we can take another step towards the door and he can decide if he's comfortable there. I'll feed him some treats while he's on my hand and feeling the new space that's outside there, anything he's observing. And again, anytime he shuffles back towards that elbow, it's an easy out, he can go back into the room. There's no need to be super panicky or scared. He has control over the situation, he's safe. And that's the main thing we want to, to help him figure out here is that he is safe and he does have control and he's able to go back inside without needing to panic or fly to do so. It's very important to me at this point that Newt understands that I am there with him that I am not ignoring everything that he wants and just shoving him outside. 
I want him to understand that I am safety. And by moving towards my elbow, he is moving closer to me. I will easily bring him to where he wants to be in order to feel safer. That is the boundary I want to set here is that I will bring him to safety, that he doesn't need to fly or panic to access safety or to feel safety or relieve that stress coming towards me, moving closer to my body will keep him safe. And that's not only going to help him in this situation where he's able to go back inside, but it'll also help him if we go on longer treks and he feels scared, where instead of his default response being to take off and fly, his default response will then be to come closer to me and be shielded by me in order to feel safe. And that way he's not taking off and feeling super stressed and scared. Instead, coming towards me will help yield those feelings of safety and relieve a lot of that stress. Now do keep in mind that every bird will move at a different rate here. Some birds may just be super confident right out the gate and be able to go outside on their first trip. Newt was pretty okay and we did end up going outside on our first trip today. Um, but other birds might need this broken down into several different trips and that's okay. You're in no rush. Your bird has a really long lifespan. It's okay if you only stand in the doorway today. You're trying to move at their pace, rushing them outside and getting them absolutely terrified is only going to make them have bad associations with the harness and make everything go a lot slower. So I was able to take some steps outside. We see Newt goes onto my hand to ask to go towards the door. I'm able to move out with him. And we will note that his body language is quite scared. He's pretty thin. His eyes pretty bug-eyed. He's not extremely comfortable with what's going on, but he has made the choice by coming towards the edge of my hand that he does want to check it out. And that's something that's kind of critical here is your bird is allowed to be scared. They're allowed to feel uncomfortable so long as they are the one wanting to pursue that discomfort and kind of face it. Birds are prey animals. They are going to be scared of just about everything they see for the first time because that's how they survive. What's important is that you aren't pushing it too far, that you're giving your bird ample choice to get out of that situation, that your bird understands how to make that choice, and that your bird is in control and properly processing everything. If your bird is terrified and petrified and frozen, they're not going to be thinking critically. They're just going to be thinking that they're scared. We want a bird that's still comfortable enough to take treats, that still knows they're the way to ask out of this situation, that they are comfortably able to leave when they feel too uncomfortable. So since Newt had decided not to ask to go back inside for a few repetitions over and over and was easily taking treats, I decided to go a little bit further. So I will make my first steps down towards my grass and I'm doing a few key things here. I'm making sure to keep Newt close to my body. One, to provide a little bit of shade so he's not in that direct sunlight and overheating, but also because there's comfort in that. If I hold him close to me and I give him kind of a human roof over top of him, that's gonna help him feel a little bit safer. And what you'll notice he's doing is he is keeping his back to me, right? He has his body facing everything that he finds scary right now because he trusts me. So he has his back towards me because he knows I've got his back, quite literally. So he feels safe kind of backing up towards me there and I'm keeping him safe. So I wanna make sure that I'm also holding him close to help rectify that situation for him and help him understand that, yep, I do have your back. I am here for you. You are good. So he is able to watch and observe everything with a bit of a smaller area of space to have to look at. If I hold him way out in front of me, he's got 360 degrees of chaos going on. It's going to be overwhelming. So by me having him nice and close to me, he only has basically the stuff squarely in front of him and a little bit to the sides to look at. I've got everything behind him that he doesn't need to look at, that he's not even able to see, that he doesn't have to worry about processing. He only has to focus on the things that are in front of him. And we're just going to stand. I might kind of turn a little bit, let him watch, but we're just going to stand. And we're just going to allow him to watch and observe. There's a lot going on he hasn't seen before. The wind blowing the trees is probably something he hasn't really acknowledged before. It's very different when they are in a carrier and witnessing these things versus when they are essentially free and feel like suddenly anything could access them. It's a very different feeling and that's something that causes them to be a lot more scared of things that they may not have even been scared of while they were out here in a carrier. So during this whole process, I'm making sure to talk to him. I'm making sure to be nice and calm and reciprocate the way that he's feeling, trying to help him relax. I'm offering him plenty of treats. I'm not too worried about his diet at the moment. I'm just worried about keeping him comfortable. If your bird were to suddenly stop taking treats, I would immediately go back inside. 
If your bird stops taking treats, that is a telltale sign that their stomach has shut down because they are too overwhelmed and stressed by what's going on. And that means that you have moved this process too quickly. It's not uncommon to see scared body language throughout this process. And you will see for a good portion of this that Newt is pretty thinned out and that's okay. Your bird is allowed to feel a little bit scared as long as they are mentally able to handle that stress and be able to process it. If your bird is thinned out, and they are constantly taking off and flying and they are constantly trying to get back inside or they are straight up refusing food or they are stress panting. Those are all signs that the stress has gone too, too far. And if your bird is thinned out for the entire duration and is never able to calm down a little bit and is never able to fluff up with you staying still just a little bit, then it's probably been a bit, a bit too much for them. So you do want to slow things down and make sure that yes, they can thin out when they get scared by something but they should be able to gradually fluff up within a short period of time. So I'm not really looking for much from Newt during the first outing. You're really just gonna walk outside, let them look at things, go back inside, and that'll be the end of the session. Newt was really, really good. He actually ended up being confident enough to want to explore a few different things. You can see him really looking at his environment and taking it all in. And he was also comfortable enough to want to step up onto a few different branches and explore some things. Um, if you're wanting to work on having your bird be able to stand on things out here and they aren't quite as confident as Newt was, um, you can bring your training perch outside. That way it's a surface that the bird is already familiar with, that they have an established understanding of having positive experiences with. And it'll be a lot easier for them to learn to step off of you while outdoors. So that would probably be the way I would go about it if my bird was a little bit more nervous. But as you can see here, Newt was pretty confident. He saw the tree. Um, that is presently sun baking and is ready to go inside and I just haven't done it yet. And he steps off right away. He doesn't need anything to help encourage him to do so. He was pretty good about just wanting to check it out and see what was going on and have a pretty familiar surface here. He hung upside down for a little bit and had a bit of, a bit of fun. Newt also did find a lot of comfort being on my shoulder. Again, it's a spot the bird sits a lot of the time. It's somewhere they do feel pretty safe. They have a lot of established history of sitting on your shoulder and feeling safe. So it's absolutely a good idea to have them there as well. I tried to avoid having Newt up there purely because it was so hot and I'm a human being that releases heat. Um, so I didn't want to have him sitting right on my shoulder where there was going to be a lot of heat um, on top of what outside was already providing. Um, but in terms of comfort, a shoulder can be a really good place to put them as well. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for the first outing. You're probably not going to get much recall on the first outing um, just because the bird's pretty scared. They're not going to want to flap and make a lot of noise. They're going to want to just freeze up and pray that nothing really sees them or comes at them. Um, but as your sessions go on, you can begin to ask for short little flights. And I would make sure to practice that basically as soon as your bird is comfortable doing so before you take them on grander adventures. You really want to make sure that your bird is capable of recalling before you ask too much of them. Because it is a critical skill, right? Yes, they are on a leash. Yes, you do have a hold of them, but accidents can happen. If you happen to drop your leash or God knows what else happens to happen, if you haven't practiced recall outside at all, you know, it's an accident waiting to happen. So as soon as your bird is comfortable enough to offer recalls and the weather is cool enough to allow that level of exercise, I would definitely begin to practice it. And again, you're gonna start it over the exact same way you did inside when you first put on the harness. And you're just going to do your best to keep the strap so it's not going to get tangled in anything. And just ask for basically a step up and then short little hops and work your way up to bigger flights. Newt was able to offer some very, very short little jumps here, um, but wasn't comfortable doing longer flights. And that's okay. You also, even if your bird is comfortable doing so, I would err on the side of caution with doing really long recalls right off the gate because of wind right? It doesn't matter how strong of a flyer your bird is indoors, unless you have a high powered industrial fan, they have not met winds. And that's going to be something that it is an obstacle they've never had to work with before. And that could cause your bird to suddenly get flung way off course, that could be very scary for them. Um, so I would definitely make sure to practice really, really short recalls um, for a long period of time, even, even when you think they're capable of flying farther. Um, and just make sure you really get the practice in with that wind for really short distances first. Just so that way if your bird takes off, they feel the wind and they don't like it, they're already at you by the time they've realized that. And they're not still having to fly another three, four, five feet um, in the wind, not knowing exactly how to combat it. So that's something I'd really make sure to practice. And we're definitely going to be practicing that for a long while. Um, 
and just be wary, right? You're outside, if it's really hot, um, flying is something that exerts a lot of energy and you, you don't want your bird to overheat. Do keep an eye out for that. If your bird is panting, if they're staying really thinned out, um, things like that, your bird may need to go inside and cool down. Make sure you've always got drinking water with you. Keeping in mind that if your bird is quite scared, um, they may not want to drink water outside because that does put them in a vulnerable position. So if you offer them water and you think they're warm, take them inside, offer them water again, see if they'll drink it inside. That's another pretty good indicator of whether or not your bird is feeling comfortable outside or not yet. So all these clips are from the first session with Newt. So he is, you know, pretty scared, pretty nervous. It's gonna take a bit before they're able to get a lot more comfortable. As long as you're being aware of their body language and you're not pushing them too far, you're making sure that they're still processing things properly and you're kind of moving things decently slow and going with what they're comfortable doing. Um, you'll be able to do longer trips each time, you'll be able to go to further places each time and build a lot of confidence that way. One final note before I end things off here is please be aware of your surroundings. I know it's very exciting, you're out there with your bird, all you want to do is, is pay attention to them and absolutely everything but you need to be watching the sky. Predatory birds are absolutely no joke. Even if you don't think you get them in your area, all it takes is one rogue bald eagle to be swooping by and your bird could be gone. So do be aware of your surroundings. I do recommend going out with more than one person so that way one person can be keeping an eye on the bird and one person can be more aware of the environment. It just makes things a lot safer and that way you guys will all have a good successful outing. Yes, a harness will keep your birds safe from flying away, but that doesn't mean they're safe from every possible hazard. So just do be, be careful. Be aware of where you are in your surroundings, even if you think you're safe in your own backyard. Um, do your preliminary checks. Make sure everything's in set and in place. And, you know, don't get too comfortable with it, thinking that it's never going to happen because accidents do happen. So that is it. Obviously, depending on your bird, it will change how long this process took. I did end up spending a few months with Newt working on those things before moving him outdoors, but that was just my personal preference and the way that things worked with him. And if you happen to take your bird outdoors already in a carrier, you will find that they adapt to these things a lot quicker. Um, so it just depends on the individual bird and the experiences that they have leading up to this. But that is it. Those are the main things I would make sure to check off my checklist before coming outside. And as always, please be safe. Keep an eye out for predators. Don't forget to bring water and plenty of snacks for them throughout this process but that's going to do it for me today so thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you all in the next one bye yes good boy